Hey everyone, it's Rain. Today we're going to talk about healthy ecosystems and especially about how different organisms, different animals and plants interact in an ecosystem as sources of food. So let's start with the term predator and with the term prey. A predator is an animal that naturally eats other animals and prey is an animal that naturally gets eaten by other animals. So predators eat prey. Next term we're going to talk about is a food chain. And a food chain describes the relationship between different animals and plants in an ecosystem. So how a food chain works is that we're going to keep going up where the rabbit is going to eat the grass and then the fox is going to eat the rabbit and then something else will eat the fox until we get to what's called a top predator. A top predator is something that's not eaten by anything else. Now you can pause the video and we can think about what a top predator might be. The example I'm thinking of is a human. No animals eat humans. So, a human is an example of a top predator. Now, I've been describing this as levels. So we've got the grass, then we've got the rabbit, then we've got the fox, and it's just one to one. That's not really how ecosystems work. It's a little bit more complex than that because in reality, the rabbit is a prey, is an example of prey. It's going to have more predators probably than just the fox. So the rabbit might also get eaten by a hawk. So we're not just having the one level up each time. That's why instead of using the term food chain, we usually use the term food web to talk about ecosystems. So instead of just one thing eating the grass, we're going to have a bunch of animals eating the grass. And then instead of just having one predator, the rabbit might get eaten by a fox and a hawk and then other organisms, other animals might eat those, the fox or the hawk. Um, so it's going to look a little bit like a web, which is why we talk about it like that. So think about a spider's web. We're going to have the primary producer kind of at the center, and then it's going to branch like a spider's web. So now I'm going to throw it over to Possum, and she's going to illustrate the food web and food chain, and she's going to talk about energy transfer and healthy ecosystems. All living things need energy to survive, and this energy begins from the sun. Flowers and other plants then take in the nutrients from the sun through a process called photosynthesis. Because plants take the energy from the sun and make it into their own food, plants are called producers in the food web. Because animals can't make their own food like plants and have to eat other animals or the plants, to get their energy, the next step in the food web is called the primary consumer, like this bunny we have here. By eating plants, primary consumers are able to get the energy they need to survive, which has been transferred all the way from the sun through the plant to the primary consumer. If a fox comes along and eats the bunny, this would make the fox a secondary consumer. The next step in the food web is a carnivore, or secondary consumer, who gets their energy by consuming primary consumers, just like this box. Then what happens after the fox? No bigger animals come to eat the fox, which makes them an apex predator. But that doesn't mean the fox doesn't contribute to the food web at all. When the fox passes away, it is broken down by decomposers. Decomposers are bacteria and fungi that break down dead plants and animals back into nutrients in the soil. Once the energy or nutrients have been brought back into the soil by providing energy for new plants to grow. And the reason it's called a food web instead of a food chain is because different animals could have come to eat the flower or the rabbit, creating a giant web of possibilities. So just to review, a food web consists of all the food chains in a single ecosystem. Each living thing in an ecosystem is part of multiple food chains, and each food chain, like our one here of a flower to the rabbit to the fox, is one possible path that energy and nutrients may take as they move through the ecosystem. Hey Startup Explorers, Clementine here. I'm going to tell you what you can do to protect the ecosystems around you. Every part of the food web is important, and to have a healthy food web, we have to have a healthy ecosystem. 
Look at these beautiful flowers. As you may have seen in our bee video, they make up an important part of a bee's ecosystem, providing food for them. So should we cut down these flowers? No, if we pick the flowers, we're taking away some of the bees' ecosystem and giving them fewer opportunities to collect their foods like pollen and nectar. So some other animals that make up the ecosystem of my backyard are birds. So this winter it was especially cold, so my family set up this birdhouse to provide shelter for birds. This is a way we can help the ecosystems around us. So right here, you can see a bird feeder, but if this were bigger, it could also be a pond. A pond is an ecosystem that provides animals with a unique source of drinking water and also is home to animals like fish and other sea creatures like turtles. These animals need a clean, safe, and non-polluted place to live so that they can breathe and search for food. Speaking of bodies of water, you may be familiar with the rivers where you live, like the Hudson River in New York City or various lakes. It is very important that we do not throw our trash on the ground or in the Hudson River. If we throw our trash on the ground, the wind can carry it and it can end up in the river. This has a big impact on the ecosystem and the animals that live there. Therefore, do your best not to pollute. All right, everyone, let's review what we learned today. So first we learned that predators are animals that eat other animals. And we learned that prey are animals that get eaten by other animals. We learned about food chains and food webs and that a food web illustrates the ways that different animals and plants interact in an ecosystem, and that predators and prey are part of those food webs. We learned about energy transfer, that at each level of a food web, there's gonna be a transfer of energy between the organisms. So first, a plant is going to get energy from the sun and make its own food, and then a primary consumer is gonna eat the plant and get the energy that the plant got from the sun and made into its own food. And then something's going to eat that thing that ate the plant. So remember our old example of the rabbit. Something's going to eat the rabbit and also get the energy that the rabbit got from the plant and that the plant got from the sun. We learned about how healthy ecosystems involve lots of different animals and plants and predators and prey and that it's a real balancing act to try and make sure that no one animal dominates the ecosystem. So if you remove one link in the food chain or one level of the food web, it could be dangerous for the rest of the ecosystem. So we preserve ecosystems by making sure that every animal and every plant in the ecosystem can flourish. As Clementine was talking about, we don't want to pick flowers too much, we don't want to pollute, we don't want to throw trash in places where it could get into ecosystems or get into waterways. Let's finish off on a high note and give some props. So I hope everybody remembers how to do this. It's going to be two pats, two claps, two snaps, and then thumbs up in the air for props. So let's try it together. One, two, three. Props. All right. So you should talk to your teachers about other materials from Sprout Up, other worksheets you can do, um, and other fun activities you can do, and we'll see you next time. I hope you had fun in this lesson.